Hi. Today I'm doing some cookies for the kids to make. I think it's really important that kids learn to cook. When I was at school, which many years ago, we had cookery lessons or domestic science, but we always, always had cookery for the first three years. And it put you in good stead for going over to university on your own and having to cook your own meals and not live on takeaways and frozen stuff. But, I mean, my first two lessons, the first one was... Um, a strawberry blancmange, which was not successful, it was it just didn't work. And the next one we did was a rolled breast of lamb, which was horrible. It was greasy and horrible and not good at the time because we didn't have very long to cook it, so it wasn't cooked for long and slow, so the fat was still all in it. It was bleh. anyway. So rather than do something that you're not going to eat, like. I would have never have eaten the blamange and the stuffed breast of lamb. I'm going to do something that you will eat. So I'm making cookies today. And they're really simple. You need 225 grams of self-raising flour. Again, I'm going to use my food processor, but you can use a mixer. I've been told by the cameraman to move my tins. Okay, so here's the flour going in the food processor. And to join the flour, you just want a little bit of salt, like the tip of a teaspoon of salt. 225 grams of granulated sugar. And 125 grams of margarine or butter. It needs to be been out of the fridge for an hour or so, so it's soft. <coughs> because it's, it's not gonna make a soft enough mixture if it's really hard out of the fridge. So if you're gonna make them, just be prepared a little bit, get it, your marge out or your butter out. And here I've got some vanilla essence, just a little bit of vanilla essence, about half a teaspoon. And one egg. Right, you've gotta make sure that your hands really clean through this because you're going to be using your hands in a minute. If you want to make these chocolate chip cookies, now's the time to put your chocolate chips in. But I didn't have any chocolate chips. But what I did have was a bar of cheap chocolate, which I've cut up. It's just ordinary chocolate like that. But I've got a knife chopped to load up. I'm going to pop that in now. But you could put Smarties in it, chocolate buttons, you could put nuts in it if you haven't got a nut allergy or anybody in your house has got a nut allergy. Or you can leave them plain. Or if you like, you can substitute some of the flour for some cocoa about 25 grams of the flour for 25 grams of cocoa to make them double chocolate chip cookies. Right, I'm going to just switch this on for a second. combined and it's like a soft dough, a real soft dough. I have got a dog. 
I think somebody might be at the door or passing the front. Right, you need a tin, an oven baking tin, a flat one. I didn't have a flat one here, they're all at the cafe. So I'm just using this one, what we used yesterday for the scones. And also to save on my greaseproof paper, I'm using the same piece of greaseproof paper that I used yesterday for the scones. And I'm just going to get a little amount. This is where you need your clean hands. And make a little ball. Put it in and just give it a little squash. You need to put these far apart because they are going to spread in the oven. They don't have to be perfect, they're cookies. Just give them plenty of room to spread. <laughs> I can hear my cameraman breathing. I've not got the radio on today. I'm just going to pop that in the wash. So I don't cut my fingers when I'm grappling around in here for the dough. Yeah, just little balls, look. Give them a squash. Right, that's about as many as I'm going to get in that tin, about five. Oh, I've got another one here. And you know when you go to the high street cookie shop, you can buy a birthday cookie. Well... I'm going to make a bigger cookie. So you just get a bit more of your mixture. Make it into a ball. And I'm popping it in a cake tin. It's not going to be as big as a birthday cookie, but it's going to be a big cookie. That one's going to be mine. just put that to one side and carry on when if you've got another tin do another tin if not wait for these to cook and then do the next batch nothing's going to happen to that in the next few minutes so i'm going to put these in the oven in the middle of the shelf in the middle of the oven on about 180 degrees about number six if it's gas and these will take between 10 and 15 minutes. You don't want them to be golden. They need to be a little bit soft in the middle so they're chewy. So I'll show you what they should look like when I've taken them out the oven. Okay, so I'm going to pop them in the oven now and I'll be back in a few minutes. These are my cookies out the oven. When you first take them out the oven, don't try and take them out the tin because they'll just fall apart. These have been out for a couple of minutes. And there you go, look. Homemade cookies. I make these for my granddaughter. Her name is Millie, but we can't call them those cookies. So we nickname our Millie, Millie Moo. So they're Millie Moo cookies. The big one's still in the oven. It's gonna be a few more minutes. But if you can see the color look, they're still really pale in the middle and just a little golden around the outside. And that makes them chewy look. It's chewy in the middle. They're still warm, so they're still a little bit flexible but I think I've probably got enough mixture to do another five plus there's the big one in the oven so there you go make yourself some Millie Moo cookies 
I could name them after you. Okay, so because I've been doing lots of sweet things and there's only myself and my husband here, apart from the dog, but he's not allowed things like that. We've still got lemon love cake. We've still got some scones and now we've got these delicious cookies. We're going to have that many sweet things in this house. I'm going to do something savoury tomorrow. So hopefully my daughter's gone shopping for me today. So she's going to get me some sausages. I've got some mincemeat. Tomorrow I might have a go at doing a meatloaf with you. It's easy enough for the kids to do. So you kids, if you fancy doing a meatloaf and cooking your mum and dad's tea, or your mum's tea, or your dad's, your grandma's, whoever you're staying with, then watch tomorrow and we'll be doing meatloaf. And I promise you, you'll love it. Okay? Bye for now.